Hello all, welcome to the tutorial video of Embedded Systems Module 6. In this module, I will be explaining about the EDLC phases and I will be also discussing about the previous year questions. EDLC phases A life cycle of product development is commonly referred as the model. A simple model contains five phases namely requirement analysis, design, development and test, deployment and maintenance. The number of phases involved in EDLC model depends on the complexity of the product. This is the pictorial representation of the various phases in EDLC. The first phase is need phase. The need may come from an individual or from the public or from a company. Need should initiate the development life cycle. Need can be visualized in any one of the three needs. New or custom product development, product re-engineering and product maintenance. New or custom product development. The need for a product which does not actually exist in the market or a product which acts as a competitor to an existing product in the current market will lead to the development of a completely new product. So here a product which actually does not exist or which is a competitor for the existing product is known as the new or a custom product development. The second one is product re-engineering. The market is very dynamic and competitive. In order to sustain in the market, the product developer should be aware of the general market trends, technology changes and the taste of the end user and should constantly improve an existing product by incorporating these new technologies and design changes for performance, functionalities and aesthetics. So re-engineering a product is the process of making in an existing product design and launching it as a new version. It is generally termed as a product upgrade. Re-engineering an existing product comes as a result of the following needs like change in business requirements, user interface enhancement and technology upgrades. The next one is product maintenance. Product maintenance need deals with the providing the technical support to the end user for an existing product in the market. The maintenance request may come as a result of product non-functioning or failure. Product maintenance is generally classified into two categories that is corrective maintenance and preventive maintenance. Corrective maintenance deals with making corrective actions following a failure or non-functioning. The failure can occur due to the damages or non-functioning of components of the product. Preventive maintenance is the maintenance to avoid the failure or non-functioning of the product. So the next phase is conceptualization phase. This phase defines the scope of concept. It performs cost benefit analysis and prepare project management and risk management plans and feasibility study. Feasibility study means examine the need and suggest possible solutions available. Cost benefit analysis which is also known as CBA revealing and assessing the total development cost and profit expected from the product. Product scope this deals with the activities involved in the product to be made and planning activities. It requires various plans to be developed first before the development like resource planning and risk management plans. The next important phase is analysis phase. Requirement analysis phase starts immediately after the documents submitted during the conceptualization phase is approved by the client or sponsor of the project. Documentation related to user requirements from the conceptualization phase is used as the basis for further 
uh, user need analysis and the development of detailed user requirements. So the various activities in analysis phase are analysis and documentation. It specifies the business needs of the product under the development. The requirements that need to be addressed and those are functional capabilities like performance, operational and non-operational quality attribute, product external interface requirements, data requirements, user manuals, operational requirements, maintenance requirements and some of the general assumptions. Next, defining test plan and procedure phase. This comes under the analysis phase. This defines the test to be performed and what should be included in the test. In product development, there are various types of testing is performed and some of them are unit testing, integration testing, system testing and user acceptance testing. So the unit testing means um, testing individually uh, the modules which means testing each unit or module of the product independently for required functionality and quality aspects. The next one is integration testing. Integrating each modules and testing the integrated unit for the required functionality. Third one is system testing. Testing the functional aspects or the functional requirements of the product after the integration testing. The system testing refers to a set of different tests and a few among them are listed below which are usability testing, test the usability of the product, load testing, testing the behavior of the product under different loading conditions, security testing, testing the security aspects of the product, scalability testing, testing the scalability aspects of the product, sanity testing, superficial testing performed to ensure that the product is functioning properly or not, performance testing, testing the performance aspects of the product after the integration testing, endurance testing to test the dur durability of the product. And last, user acceptance testing, testing the product to meet the end user requirements. This is one of the important questions which was asked in the university exam. The next phase is the design phase. Product design phase deals with the entire design of the product, taking the requirements into consideration and it focuses on how the required functionalities can be delivered to the product. The design phase identifies the application environment and creates an overall architecture for the product. Product design starts with the preliminary design. This design establishes the top level architecture for the product and it will be listing out the various functional blocks required for the particular product and defines the inputs and the outputs for each functional block. The functional block will look like a black box at the design point with only the inputs and the outputs of the block being defined. On completion, the preliminary design document which is also known as the PDD is sent for review to the end user or the client who came up with the uh, need for this particular product and if the end user agrees on the preliminary design then the product design team takes the work to the next level that is called the detailed design. Detailed design generates a detailed architecture, identifies and lists out the various components for each functional block, the interconnection among various functional blocks, the control algorithm requirements etc. The detailed design also needs to be reviewed and get approved by the end user or the customer. And if the end user wants any modification on this design, it can be informed to the design team through review commands. 
so this is the overall content of design phase and uh, this is a pictorial representation of what I explained just now so if in exam it is asked you can draw this diagram next phase is the development and testing phase development phase transforms the design into a realizable product for this the detailed specifications generated during the design phase are translated into hardware and the firmware and during this development phase the installation and setting up of various development tools is performed and the product uh, hardware and firmware is developed using different tools and associated production setup so testing can be divided into independent testing of software and hardware which is uh, unit testing integration testing and system testing and the user acceptance testing which is already explained so the next phase is the uh, deployment phase deployment is the process of launching the first the next phase is the deployment phase deployment is the process of launching the first fully functional model of the product in the market or handing over the fully functional initial model to the end user or the client it is also known as the first customer shipping which is also known as FCS during this phase the product modifications as per the various integration tests are implemented and the product is made operational in the production environment the deployment phase is initiated after the system test is accepted by the end user the important tasks which are performed in the deployment phase are notification of the product deployment execution of training plan product installation and product post implementation review notification of product deployment which means whenever this product is ready to launch in the market the launching ceremony details should be communicated to the stakeholders and to the public if it is a commercial product the notifications can be sent out through the email or media etc mentioning some of the following in few words like how deployment schedule which includes the date time and venue brief description about the product targeted end users and the extra features supported with respect to an existing product product support information including the uh, support person name the contact number contact email id etc the next one is the execution of the training plan training the end user uh, proper training will help in reducing the possible damages to the product as well as the operating person including the personal injuries and product malfunctioning due to inappropriate usage user manual will help in understanding the product its usage and assessing its functionalities to certain extent the next one is product installation install the product as per the installation document to ensure that it is fully functional the next one is product post implementation review this is to determine the success of the product document the problems faced during the installation and solutions adopted the next phase is the support phase the support deals with the operational and maintenance of the product in the production environment bugs in the product may be observed and reported the support phase ensures that the product meets the user needs and it continues functioning in the production environment the activities which are involved under the support phase are setting up a dedicated support wing identify the bugs and the areas of improvement the first one setting up of dedicated support wing which involves providing 24 into 7 hours of support for the product after it is launched identifying bugs and the areas of improvement identify the particular bugs wherever it is found and take the possible measures to eliminate them the next phase is the upgrade phase it is necessary to upgrade a product already present in the market upgrade deals with feature enhancement bug fixes etc 
it deals with the development of upgrades that is the new version of the pro for the product which is already present in the market and during the upgrade phase the system is subject to design modification in major areas the next phase is the, the next phase is the retirement and disposal due to the increased user needs a product cannot sustain in market for a long time so the manufacturer realizes that there is another powerful technology available in market which is most suitable for production of the current product so they will announce that the current product as obsolete and is discontinued from the market the retirement or disposal of the product is a gradual process this phase is the final phase in a product development life cycle the product is declared as discontinued from the market in this particular stage the disposal of a product is essential due to the increased user needs and second the rapid technology and advancement these are some of the previous year university questions the first one explain the need for product reengineering in embedded product development which is asked for four marks in may 2019 what are the factors that lead to disposal of an embedded product three marks may 2019 explain the various types of testing performed in embedded product development six marks this can be all this is already explained in the analysis phase uh, state the different phases of embedded product development life cycle explain briefly the function of each phase 12 marks so in this question you have to explain all the phases briefly uh, with the possible diagrams uh, and that's it these are the four possible questions which can be uh, further asked in future university exam here is what we learned the different phases of edlc namely the need phase conceptualization phase analysis phase design phase development and testing phase deployment phase support phase upgrade phase and the retirement and disposal phase thank you